let's make a start. Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar, which is what's the impact of Tiger Prism in 2021 and beyond. I'm Louise Bennett, Tiger's Marketing Manager, and I'm joined by our Chief Operating Officer, Ben Nicklin. And many of you will know and recognise Ben. He's a long-standing member of Tiger's leadership team, and he's worked for the business for over 20 years. So who better to take us through the latest product releases and news about Tiger? Um, and we're also going to be looking at what the future holds for Tiger and Tiger Prism. Um, so really excited about this session today. Yeah, good, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Louise. And I'm um, glad to say I managed to have a post lockdown haircut after that image. So. <laughs> OK, so um, before we get started, just a few housekeeping points from me. So we're expecting this webinar to be around 30 minutes today, um, which means there's going to be plenty of time at the end for you guys to ask questions. And if you do have a question, you can either pop it into the meeting chat or if you'd like to stay anonymous, um, then just email hello at tiger.io and we'll cover those off at the end. And we're keen really for this to be an interactive session today. Um, so we're going to be run, running a number of polls to get your feedback on the discussions. Um, so we're going to actually kick things off with a poll. Um, so the first poll for today's session is if that technology works and it comes up on screen. So on a scale of one to five, has the pandemic increased your need for data analytics tools? Um, so if you select um, the most appropriate answer and then press submit and we'll take a look at those responses. Just a few more responses coming in there. Oh, so it's, it's a bit of a tie break, Ben, between uh, yes, definitely across the whole organisation and somewhat across some departments and a few people saying it stayed the same, but no one's saying that it's going down. So <laughs> that's good news. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very much um, in the, uh, the the realms of what we're seeing and, and discussing with our customers and partners. And, and certainly, I think that generally across, uh, you know, all industries um, it being reactive to what's happened, um, people have understood that, that there's more data available than ever before. Um, and people are asking more questions. And I think now if you, you know, if you're not in the position to provide an answer to those questions, um, then clearly the, the expectations are is that the, well, the data should be available. Where is it? And, and that's how we're being able to support some of our customers in, in those areas. Absolutely. So thanks everyone for your input on that. So if we get into the main discussion now, Ben, can you start by giving us an overview of what's been going on at Tiger this year? Yeah, of course. I mean, if uh, if it's OK, I mean, for some of the people on the call, I might just start a little bit earlier than that, Louise, and just maybe sort of recap a couple of things from last year. So we had a new CEO join us, John Pickering, who those of you who've been on some of the other webinars in the in the series, John hosted one of the first ones. So, um, you know, John's come into the business to, to help us sort of look uh, forward at the growth plans within Tiger, which I think should be encouraging to everyone on the call because, you know, we want to create a Tiger that's that's stronger and better performed performing than ever. So, um, but that's, uh, you know, some of the things that we we looked at at the beginning of, of 2021 was, okay, how do we position ourselves better? What is it that we, we do and offer for our customers? Um, how are we perceived? And, you know, what's our customer experience? So we, we straight away went into kind of a bit of survey mode um, and learning and we wanted to get that feedback so we actually and that led into a new brand um, and making sure and message uh, and really corporate identity you know making sure that our customers understood what our value proposition was um, what it is that we're doing what our strategy is how we're moving forward and developing um, and that was a, a, a big project for us last year and, and clearly working under the, the conditions like many of the people on this call you know working remotely having to to have different types of, of team meetings um, but I'm really proud of the entire organization the way that they've developed that um, you know we've had lots of new starters come into the team and strengthen it um, yourself included Louise um, <laughs> and and so you know it's been a really really important year for us in in terms of our our, our, our growth and our strategy um, but, you know, as I talked about those new recruits, um, so we've 
looked at how we interact with our customers, how we develop our software. So um, at the tail end of last year, we um, recruited a, a gentleman called um, Richard Burt, um, and Richard's heading up our service management teams. Now, our customers on the call will know that over the years we've had um, different offerings. So we've had um, you know customers that have support on services that we provide on premise. We have our cloud offering, and they were looked after by the managed service teams. And really, really our, our our customers are not different. It doesn't matter what sort of blend of Tiger you you buy. Um, we actually need, you know, operationally we we do the same things. So Richard come in to actually sort of um, help. Um, run that team in a more sort of unified way um, and deliver lots of new processes um, around ITIL. Um, we know we're not swallowing the ITIL handbook, but you know, much like when we did the ISO 27001 accreditation, we were already doing a number of things. It's just how were we actually, you know, really documenting those, how are we kind of you know, auditing them. Um, so yeah, Richard coming in as, as, as working with the team has been fantastic. And we recently did an, a, a poll and I'm really pleased to say that the results were fantastic. You know, um, I think it was over 95% of customers saying that they were receiving a, a, a good service and and that puts us in that upper qu uh, quartile. Um, we've we've also sort of reorged that, that um, area of the business to create that kind of demarcation that the projects deliver into technical services um, and once they're completed by technical services they're into support so whereas we did have a lot of crossover before so it's, it's working really well for us now um, and then as I said in development um, so we Phil Smith who some of you will remember from the user groups Phil was our software director and and he delivered for us the the new re-engineered version of Prism um, that we released at the tail end of last year. And as part of our growth and strategy, again, Phil has now moved into a chief architect role because he's looking at how do we take Tiger further forward? What, what are we doing next? Um, and really into kind of more of an exploration role. So as part of that, we um, brought in uh, Tim Harvey into our team as a head of development. And Tim's you know, responsibilities there is to get the team functioning to um, not be working in such a long-term project stance now. So we're actually working in a more agile way, working in with sprints. Um, we're, and our goal is to be delivering software on a much more frequent basis. Um, we've also recruited into to other areas. We've got a new product owner join the business. And, and the task there is to work really directly with our customers as to what is it you need from Tiger? You know, we've, we've developed a lot of software around what we believe the market needs and what our customers want. Um, but now we're looking for those real niche items and those those new developments and innovations that we can we can support you all with. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear about all of that, because um, obviously often when we're working with customers, they're using data from our platform to drive their own transformations and changes. Um, so it's interesting that we've also been going through our own transformation alongside that isn't it yeah most certainly and you know we, we recently uh, there was an article in a couple of um press um uh, sort of articles sorry that i published that you know around transformation and yeah so we understand this is something that businesses go through and we've actually um part of one of the other recruits we've made around data analyst roles um you know helping our business connect our internal systems whether it be financial whether it be our crm um and actually presenting some of those key metrics to us as a board so that we can tell how our transformational journey is, is progressing. Absolutely. So that kind of brings us quite nicely onto the next topic. Um, obviously, there's lots going on at a business level, but what's been happening with the product, Ben? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let, let's sort of um, talk about what, what Prism is there to you know achieve in the la in, in this year and, and beyond. So the first thing that we we looked at is clearly a lot of our customers were starting to use um, cloud technologies for hosting Prism rather than just servers on site. We also were running our own um, SaaS offer. So um, 
importantly footprint was something that we wanted to review within prism so footprint is, is what we really call how much of a resource does it need so whether that be cpu utilization whether it be ram and memory allocation but equally storage so we looked at how prism could be really optimized for our customers so that all of those those utilization st uh, stats reduced um, but equally how we deploy our software. So um, our engineers have, have a long time been responsible for installing and running you know, scripts to do things. And we, we really wanted to simplify the process. So we implemented a, a platform that would able, enable us to deploy our software um, sort of semi-automatically, or at least where we could reduce the, the human input to it. But our engineers are still really important in working with our customers to configure the system so it really meets their needs. Um, but we just want to make sure we've got more time to work with the customer to support them than just installing the software. Um, we also then worked with um, a number of our partners uh, who sort of operate more outside of the UK, but we, we have had some interest in this in the UK around budget alerting. Um, so I know that you know, a lot of customers now are, well, the cost isn't as important as it once was to us, but in a lot of um, countries around the world, this is still a massive thing. And the ability for a manager to see how much their staff are spending on calls all the way through the month and then alert them when they go over certain restrictions is, is actually kind of a mandatory feature for a lot of um, public sector organizations organizations in, in other countries. So we developed that module in conjunction with that partner and it's been very successful. Um, probably the biggest feature we've launched this year is Microsoft Teams integration. So um, we're pleased to say that the we integrate to the Graph API with Microsoft. It's effectively the, the connecting and integration point that unleashes all of the data that's stored within uh, Office 365, within, within Teams and, and other apps. And we're really excited about this looking forward because we're really only scratching the surface and it's maturing all of the time. So there'll be lots more to talk about um, uh, you know, next year with this as well. Um, but they launched their cool detail record um, endpoint and that was a new way of us working. We, we have a thing called a, a webhook where it you know, basically sends us a packet to say, are you listening, gives us some information and then we have to go and retrieve some details and data later on. Um, so we had to develop new services around that and yeah, that, that unleashed then for us the actual transactional records within Microsoft Teams. Um, and it's given us data that we've we've never sometimes seen before from previous you know telephony and UC platforms. You know we can now see the the network based information, whether someone's on Wi-Fi or wired connection, what headset they're using. The, the, you know. So there's again, it's really only scratching the surface. Surface, and we're 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 genuinely quite excited about that. And I think if you're using Microsoft Teams, it's not just about call records now it's about the entire experience it's about the entire interaction so um then coming back a little bit to what we have done internally around supporting our customers and improving customer experience so we've relaunched the, the tiger community um, this is effectively a, a, a hub where our customers and our staff can interact. Um, you can look at your cases, you can raise ideas, you can read our um, marketing collateral, you can read our white papers, you can see some of the things that we've had into the, um, into the press, but also there's a, a fantastic knowledge base being built up now. So you can type a, start typing some keywords and it will come back and suggest to you articles that you might want to read about those, those subjects or those issues that you might be facing. And you know, that's again, it's about giving you an option. So please rest assured, we're not taking away the ability to contact us by telephone or email, that will still remain, but we do feel this is an extra opportunity for people to, to get more access to us. Um, and finally, just touching on, I mean, there's been lots that's gone on, but we're again, excited about a data consultancy offer. And we've, as I said to you on the call earlier, we, we built our own kind of dashboards and scoreboards um, but we want to offer and we've seen great success with certain customers of this is you've got a platform and a system that contains data and we know in many of our customers that data isn't necessarily being accessed wider in the business. Um, now, a lot of our customers are using other app analytics tools, you know, they're doing data warehousing, they're using Power BI and Tableau 
Well, Tiger are more than happy to open the doors to work with those um, data teams within your organization to help contribute information into those systems because it, you know it will give you a broader aspect on what's happening in your business so um, we've got the team headed up by Kevin who will actually be able to you know kind of give advice and um, offer consultancy and you know support in terms of how we can work with you in a much more open manner so I think that's again something through 2022 that will really continue to grow. Definitely. And it really plays into some of the discussions that we've been having um, in the other autumn webinars as well around kind of um, placing data in the hands of everyone and empowering everyone to be able to make decisions with that data, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. It's so important because, you know, we, we try and make decisions centrally um, and you have this holistic view and that's very powerful, of course. But you know, we know we, we're a, a smaller, a small business and, and we know that decisions get made every day and we're trying to drive a data database decisions and a really a data based culture. And unless you're actually enabling people within all areas of the business to use that data, you'll never be able to succeed with that. And I think it should be an encouragement that across all organisations that, you know, the data is there somewhere. It's, it's how do we get it and how do I use it to work better every day with my team, with my business? OK, so we're going to move into the third section of the webinar, which is obviously looking into the future. Um, but before we do that, we've got another audience poll. So this time we're asking, what's your current Unify communications platform of choice? And this is multiple choice. So select um, as many as, as apply and press submit. We can have a little look at the results there. Just give everyone a few more seconds to submit their answer. We always wait patiently for, you know, what, what, what's the answer going to be and, and what do we have to talk about next, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so interestingly, Cisco and Microsoft Teams. So is that in line with what you would have expected, Ben? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And um, I, I guess it would be quite interesting to know how many of those have been multiple choice in, in that they're, they're linked together. So, um, I mean, look, Cisco have always been a, a strong player, a strong vendor. Um, we were very well aligned to a lot of their goal partners over the, the number of years. And, and it doesn't come as any surprise that Microsoft Teams uh, has emerged in there as well. They're two, you know, two of the largest tech companies globally. Um, so we, we certainly are seeing more of a hybrid as well and I think that will continue because a lot of customers realize that the cloud doesn't natively support every feature that they're looking for so they will continue to use um, you know a mixture of equipment and technology that they've invested in because they haven't fully realized the, the value on that yet um, but they'll also link it into a technology like Teams where it's a universal client it effectively is the the tool that people use to communicate, but what happens behind the scenes needs to sometimes be a lot more in depth or, you know, I don't like using the word complex, but sometimes you can't avoid it. And so, yeah, I think that will be something that we, we sort of see. Absolutely. And so one final question for our audience today, um, which is, do you foresee your unified communications platform changing in the next 12 to 18 months? I feel like we're on who wants to be a millionaire it's the fastest finger <laughs> first kind of challenge isn't it yeah phone a friend <laughs> <laughs> oh I have to say I find that quite interesting that um quite a few well 51 percent we're not anticipating any major changes and then 18 percent tied oh Maybe I'm jumping the gun a bit there. <laughs> Waiting for all results to be in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so actually that ties into something you and I were talking about um, the other day, really, 
wasn't it in in terms of um people still what we're hearing in the market is people still not sure what this new kind of hybrid world is going to look like as such yeah it's um you know some of the trends that we were picking up on is that in the last 18 months i mean we you, you hear things like there were there's 10 years of transformation inside three to six months and it's not unrealistic really you know businesses have had to adapt um you know in staff have, have now realized that you know they can work just just as productively at, at home but one of the things we've touched on is you know sometimes productivity is is clearly wider than just the task at hand um you know, businesses are going to have to re- respond to how they continue to engage their staff moving forward. But, you know, in terms of not expecting changes, I think that there was a reaction and a, a need to make things work. I mean, that last year was all about we just need to make it work, whatever's needed. Um, we're certainly believing that, you know, some of the vendors that took a bit of a, a stride forward last in the last 18 months, clearly they were in the best position to just scale up. But that doesn't mean that the, the, some of the more traditional vendors are not going to remain competitive. You know, they still have customer loyalty. They still have fantastic solutions. Um, but I think there will be this hybrid hybrid play coming in and it will be let's not be afraid to use some public cloud services for areas of our business, but let's connect them to more traditional kind of um, you know, back end services uh, for, for the enterprise. Um, I also think that you know that people will take stock now. They know things are working. Um, there'll be other challenges that they're trying to address, and certainly the data one is is we're seeing is evident. You know, we've made it work. Now, how do we prove it? How do we improve it? And mm-hmm. so, certainly, I think that people will will start to consider the market. They'll see how things settle down. They'll see what emerging technologies come. And I think one stat you know that is really key is we were on a um, or I was on a Cisco webinar recently and they talked about previously they might release um, you know 50 features a year last year they released 400 features to Webex yeah. and this year they're, they're planning somewhere in the region of a thousand plus so the innovation has gone through the roof because suddenly you have people using it people are seeing where some of the challenges are what the desires and needs are and actually the, the software businesses are having to just be more agile and more responsive than ever to make sure that you know they keep driving that forward so um, you know one case in point being with Microsoft Teams if you remember Remember back in March 2021, you know, sorry, 2020, um, you had to actually, um, uh, you only had four people on screen at once, you know, and, and who would yeah. think today that that would just be completely, you know, impractical for, for us. Yeah, totally. So it's all got more and more fast paced and um, just bringing things back to Tiger a little bit. What does the next 12 months look like for us, Ben? Yeah, so so I think, um, you know, in terms of our processes and our sort of foundations that we've really built on through the last 18 months, um, we're really in the, the mode now that we're in that kind of customer acquisition. Um, but let's talk about the, the technology. So what's coming next? So integrations is, is our first sort of priority. So we've clearly got our strong relationships with with Cisco and Microsoft, Avaya, Mitel, um, Unify, At- you know, Atos, but we we know there's other vendors in the market. So we've got partners, that are, you know, and customers using Ring Central. Um, they, they're talking about using a mixture and a hybrid of Zoom and Microsoft. And so Prism is a, a data analytics platform around unified comms and collaboration. So we want to add more capability that our customers are demanding around those those um, those products. Um, we also will be looking at enhancing what we already do. So I mentioned to you the Graph API. We're looking at adding things in about some of the, the other applications. So OneDrive, SharePoint, um, Yammer, if anyone uses that as a community tool, um, and being able to provide some statistical information about that. But yet again, they're driving that forward. There's analytical insights linked to the Microsoft Fever type tool, which again, they're publishing this out. Microsoft really are setting the standard that, yes, we want to provide a cookie cutter service to everyone, but actually it's the customer's data. And we want the customer and we want ISVs like Tiger to capture that data, create new innovative ways of using it and drive different business outcomes. So, you know, we've got to focus our efforts on on that really, really quite key, really. And, you know, then what we're working working on is, is 
what are Tiger going to do as well as Prism? You know, we yeah. we think the data analytics market, we do some great um, data transformation with our directory integration tool um, that some of you may have seen. And, you know, we want to take that on to another level. So Phil has been charged with, um, you know, kind of exploring all of these ideas, looking at what else we can do. And, and actually, it's really a call to action for the people on this webinar is, you know, what is it that you are being challenged with on a daily basis that you think that actually wouldn't it be great if someone could help me with this? And Tiger could be a, an answer to that around the UC or, or around data analytics. And certainly that we're, we're open to those ideas. And we've actually got, I, I think it is ideas, at, or, uh, uh, sorry, hello at tiger.io, where yeah. if you've got those kind of things, fly it into us and, and Louise and the team will be really keen to, to look at it. Totally. Um, so also, I will say, again, in terms of that enhancements, the Microsoft Teams call queues. Um, so we're being asked about this all the time, like the auto attendance, call queues, things about the or the audio quality, um, because, you know, a great case in point is you, you could provide fantastic equipment to people, find that they're not using it or they're, you know, working from anywhere now. And they could be in a coffee shop with poor Wi-Fi or they're on 4G and it's not quite a good enough signal. And they're having a poor call um, and that experience is going to be key so you need to be able to diagnose it at, at quite a low level um, to understand where some of those root causes would be so it's all about um, you know we talk about consolidation was a lot of the last sort of six months then we talk about you know exploitation of the product you know what more can we do to support those customers and then the exploration phase is is what phil and, and a couple of the team are really looking at as to what we where we can go Definitely exciting times ahead for us and our, our customers. Um, so we're going to open it up to the floor now and ask if any of you guys on this webinar have some questions for us. So you can either pop that into the meeting chat or you can unmute and ask Ben directly or um, do email hello at tiger.io. I've got my eye on that if you want to send any questions through. Don't be shy. <laughs> Okay, don't think we've had any questions yet. <laughs> One question I had actually, Ben, was um, if someone does have a suggestion for the product, how do they talk to Tiger about it? Obviously, we mentioned the email, but how else can they kind of get involved? Yeah, we so the, the, uh, any channel, you, you know, is open. So you can speak to your account manager. Um, if you don't know who that is, then clearly just contact us, whether that be on that hello.tiger.io. Um, you can speak to the support team. Um, you can use, uh, now I will say with the community, there are any nominated users within organizations that have access to it because of the, the security. Um, but, you know, if you are a community user, that's a place to go. If you're not already and you're really interested in that because it sounds like, then clearly contact the support team. Um, and what we'll do is be able to go through a process with you just to, to validate and, and then obviously look at whether we can set you up uh, or get you approved to have an access. Um, but yeah, just just um, any of the channels really. And yeah, clearly the, the board are also and leadership team are always interested. So whether it be on LinkedIn, pop us a message, connect to us. You know, we always want to sort of be able to tell what's happening within our customer base. So, um, oh, it looks like we did get a, a question. We've from had the a floor. question. Yeah. So <laughs> how important will audio slash voice be in 2021, especially with organizations moving to a more hybrid approach slash working from anywhere? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So I still feel um, and, you know, we we talk to a lot of our, our customers and partners about this. And I think audio and voice will still play a massive part moving forward. And um, again, if you uh, sort of go through some of our, our press review, we might send you a link to it. I did an article where it talked about why every voice, sorry, why every call doesn't need to be a video call. Um, and actually, if you think about what you know for years we've all traveled in on on trains in cars we've used that time effectively to make calls that you know to touch base with people to get a status update to check in you know we we've always done that productively so i still feel you know video is a case of look, it's brilliant it's it's more immersive but it does it isn't always the answer and it's not the right fit for every single person so um, I think that 
you know we we're all being encouraged to kind of you know take time and go for a walk and do things like that well again voice calls are, are perfectly you know satisfactory to still be productive still achieve what you need to do but you don't need to be sat at your desk you don't need to be sort of you know in a chair like like this so mm. so i i still feel it'll be immensely important and i think that it will you know if anything make more of a return because again you're in order to do video to do screen sharing you're dependent on network bandwidth and quality um and ultimately one of the things that is going to be measured more than anything is is experience because it you know you would rather have a voice call where you've got your you know very direct we know what we're talking about it's all done than maybe like oh i can't hear you because you got video. can you turn your video off because it's all uh, or actually i'm holding you while i'm walking along and it's all so I, I think there's a massive play for it. I don't think it'll ever disappear. I And to quote, I remember a, uh, a customer of ours over 20 years ago, and yes, I have been at Tiger that long, um, <laughs> actually saying, yeah, don't worry, no one will make telephone calls in five years and all this kind of stuff. And it's still there. It's still here. And this call we're on now, yes, it's a meeting, but fundamentally it is a call. Yeah. OK, are you happy to wrap it up there then? Doesn't seem like we have any other questions. So. That's absolutely we fine. Can, yeah, we can bring it to a close. So a big thank you, um, Ben, for being in the hot seat for this. Um, we hope everyone on this webinar has found it a useful update from Tiger. I know I've certainly enjoyed it. Um, and thank you all for taking the time out today to attend. We really appreciate it. So this webinar has been part of a three part autumn webinar series. And if you'd like to recap any of the content from today's session or the previous discussions, please head to our website and you'll find all of the recordings from those. And as Ben said earlier, make sure you give us your feedback. Um, if you have ideas for future webinars, um, do let us know whether that's panel discussions or product updates. Let us know and we'll see what we can get into the schedule. We also mentioned our new community. Um, so if you haven't already, make sure you check that out um, for the full library of information that's um, available there. And the link to that is on screen now. And if you have any further questions for us at Tiger, please get in touch on hello at tiger.io. We're a friendly bunch and we're always happy to have a chat. Um, so that's all from me and Ben. Have a great day, yeah. everyone. Well, if Thanks. I if I could, if I could just say, Louise, just in final, <laughs> and I know you always get a bit shy about this, you know, <laughs> on behalf of of everyone at Tiger, I know how much effort you've put in and the team have put in. So, um, you know, a big thank you to to you. The, the whole team at Tiger involved um, and supporting this. Importantly, our customers and partners that, that attended and, and equally all of the guest speakers, because this is something we want to continue. Um, and, yeah. you know, we're really interested in creating, um, you know, d discussion and debate between our customers because you're all yeah. You know, working through some of the same issues so um, I appreciate sometimes it can be a bit daunting to come on and do these things but actually you all know what you're talking about you're experiencing it on a daily basis and just sharing some of those ideas um, sharing some of those challenges so we want to continue it but we can only do that with you know with your support and with your attendances so um, thank you very much and you know just that that's really important to us thank you OK, and someone's asked for a mug um, and I'm sorry that that happened to you and I will make sure I get another one out. <laughs> OK, <laughs> thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you.